Rockies and the Red Sox and the Anaheim Angels, a new-look ball club and a new-look stadium in uh, brand-new uniforms. And in the top of the first against Mark Langston, the opening day starter for Anaheim, Garcia Parra has flied out. John Valentin doubled into the corner and right. He just walked Mo Vaughn, so runners aboard at first and second as uh, the designated hitter, Mike Stanley, swings at the first offering from Langston. Stanley to be followed by the third baseman, Tim Nearing. One out in the top half of the first inning for the Boston Red Sox, who will go with Tom Flash Gordon as their opening day pitcher. New managers for both ball clubs. Jimmy Williams in the Red Sox dugout. Terry Collins for Anaheim. Jim Leyritz is behind the plate. Nice block of that offering by Langston, and it's one ball and a strike to Mike Stanley. Kevin, have to ask you right off the top. How strange is this to be up here and watch your ball club for the last two years? You know, it's it's funny. Uh, some of the players asked me that down there. I said, I'm more concerned about doing a good broadcast and trying to say things correctly. So I've, I've got a new <laughs> job to worry about. And that's all I'm concerned about. But it, it's fun to see the guys. They're very supportive over the course of uh, the winter time, I talked to several of them. And they're pumped up. I had a good chat with Jimmy Williams before the ball game. And I told Jimmy, I said, they're going to play hard for you. And he's, he's a good baseball man. And Jimmy's been through it before and had kind of one of those manager-to-manager -manager talks. But now I'm a broadcaster. Well, they've got a little threat brewing in the top of the first. Stanley lifts that one to a medium deep right center field. There's a lot of room out there for Edmonds. Jim making the catch, but it will allow Valentin to advance to third base as Vaughn hangs on at first, and the Red Sox have runners on the corners with two out in the top of the first. That fly ball, that, that throw at Edmonds, that's, that's exactly where you have to throw the ball, one hop to second base to keep that runner at first base from tagging up and going to second. A lot of young players will make a mistake and try to throw to third base there to get Valentin, and Edmonds knew he had no chance. Just something to take note of for youngsters out there. Good look at the new look here at Anaheim Stadium. As you can tell, they've taken out most of the what used to be the outfield seats in the early 80s uh, expansion when the Rams moved from the Coliseum. This is now a baseball-only structure. This year, seating 34,000 and a crowd of about 30,000 expected. By the time uh, we open next year, should be at 45,000. And uh, completely renovated with luxury boxes and uh, new press box. A lot of new uh, appointments in both locker rooms. This is uh, now, I think, one of the better facilities in either league. As Tim Nearing steps in, Vaughn pretty close to being picked off at first. Langston uh, has won several gold gloves. He's one of the better fielding pitchers in the American League. Timmy Nearing right here is going to take a shot to right field. He's a very smart hitter in these situations. He does not try to pull the ball very often. He'll take what the pitcher gives him. Nearing sends that one to De Sarcina, who will uh, make the easy flip to second base. Alisea there for the force, and we're through the top of the first. The Angels coming to bat. built our house, we found a lot that was just perfect. Yeah, well, it was the worst sight I'd ever seen. We love the view, and the sunsets are incredible. The weather is brutal. It had everything. Earthquakes, tidal waves, horizontal rain. We wanted lots of windows. I insisted on Anderson windows. At Anderson, we appreciate the builders who, time after time, make it look easy. We're still in love with this house. And I'm still recovering. Worry-proof, time-proof. Anderson windows. Hey, Brett, these guys have a beer menu. This beer is made with lingonberries. Ooh, and this one has a dash of espresso. Aura of forbidden coconut. Two Coors. Since 1873, original Coors, pure and simple. Peach medley. You see this? This beer has beer in it. Mm. 
Angel half of the first now. The Red Sox a threat, but uh, nothing more in the top half of the first inning. And the Anaheim lineup to face Tom Gordon, getting the opening uh, night assignment for the Red Sox. Darren Erstadt leads off at first. Luis Alisea, late of the cards at second, batting second. Jim Edmonds is in center. The cleanup hitter in right is Tim Salmon. Dave Holland's the new third baseman. Garrett Anderson in left. Eddie Murray, the new DH for the Angels. Jim Leyritz, fresh from the uh, World Series triumph with the Yankees, is behind the plate. And the shortstop is the veteran Gary DeSarcina. Tom Gordon at 29 years of age in his ninth year and his record from a year ago 12 and 9 but a 559 ERA he got the most run support of any American League pitcher last year an average of better than seven runs per nine innings so some mediocre numbers from Tom still worth uh, three games better than 500 12 and 9 record and Darren Erstad steps in looks at ball one. What you're going to see from Tom Gordon is a variety of a uh, good overpowering fastball. Good overhand strikeout curveball. He throws his curveball from two different angles. He'll throw a little three-quarter slurve type just to get it over. And then when he gets two strikes, he'll go to the power curveball and try to bounce it. Ball two to Erstad. The first pick in the June 95 draft by the Angels after an All-America career at Nebraska, including time as a punter for the 1994 national champion Husker football unit. Did not play baseball in high school, football, hockey, and track. In Roger Maris's home hometown of Jamestown, North Dakota, 2-0 pitch over for a strike. Tom Gordon also worked last summer on working on a little cutter with Sammy Ellis, pitching coach for Boston last the latter half of last year. And Tommy came up with a pretty good one. Also mixes in a changeup occasionally, but basically he's fastball curveball. The 2-1. Way high to Erstad and Gordon immediately falling behind. This is a guy that, that, like all pitchers, needs to work ahead in the count to make his stuff its most effective. Well, this was Tommy's problem in 96. Uh, he works high in the zone a lot. When he misses, he misses high with his fastball and works behind the count a lot. So the 3 1 over at the uh, waist and the count runs full to Erstad. There's never been a question of Tommy's stuff. He's got an outstanding fastball and as good a curveball as you want to see. At one time, he was a closer for Kansas City, then became their number three starter. And of course, now for Boston, he's a number one starter, which is a new role for him. 3 2 to Erstad. Swung on and missed, and Gordon retires the first batter of 1997 for the Anaheim Angels with the uh, new look duds. They've gone to the sleeveless look this year. Under the new ownership of the Disney Company, there's the Red Sox defense, and especially uh, in the outfield, Kevin, a lot of people in the new positions, and at second, Valentin moving from short to make room for Garcia Parra. We, we touched at it at the top of the show. New left fielder Will Cordero played briefly in left field for Montreal two years ago. Last year, not at all. That's brand new for him. Shane Mack in center. And Luis Alisea, the batter, looks at a strike. And Rudy Pemperton in right field. Pretty good throwing arm and a lot of speed in right field. That's their best, probably their best arm in the outfield. Shane Mack, the center fielder, has come up with a sore shoulder most of the spring, and there's a lot of concern there. And that left field, in left field and center field, you can take some extra bases on those two guys. Alisea with the Cardinals last year hit 258. Five homers, 42 RBIs. Getting back to the defense briefly at shortstop Garcia Parra chance to be the American League Rookie of the Year Valentin moves over to second base where he's never played before perhaps a bit unwillingly but John's a professional. Alice with a notion and holds off but it's one and two Luis in Boston two years ago and then the cards last year their everyday second baseman in the absence of Mike Gallego. Infield definitely with a different look for Boston. As a Gordon brings up his second strikeout in as many batters. Do you think it's better than a year ago? Well, as most people in the organization I've talked to think it is. Garcia Parra came up the latter half of 96 and played extremely well, particularly in September. And that's the, the reason they moved Valentin to second base. They feel with with John going to second, Cordero to the outfield, that they're a stronger defensively up, up the middle. Strong start by Gordon, striking out Erstad and Alisea, and here is Jim Edmonds. 
twice on the disabled list a year ago but still super numbers. And he looks at strike one hit 304 27 home runs. Knocked in 66 in just 114 games. He twice spent time on the disabled list with a strained left shoulder and a sprained right thumb. After a big 95 season as well. Tom Gordon's just going right after these guys. That's what he likes to do early in the game. And when he does miss, he'll do just that. Miss high. But he's going right after the Angel lineup right now with power fastballs. And he gets ahead. Last year, what he did a lot of times was almost use his fastball too much with two strikes and got in a little bit of trouble. Right now, he's having success with it. So he's staying with it. The 1 1, and Edmonds can't catch up to it. With uh, Tim Salmon and Garrett Anderson, Angels with the youngest outfield in either league. Too high for Edmonds to catch up to. Salmon to just 28, Anderson is 24, and Edmonds is 26. The 1 2 also misses high. Tom's staying up in the zone. Edmonds chases that high ball on the pitch before, but he can hit that pitch. We've seen him do that many times in the American League over the center field wall. He likes the ball up there. He gets underneath it, and you'll see long, high home runs when Edmonds gets it. He's capable of hitting 30 plus home runs. Gordon ready at 2 2 and somehow just missing the inside corner not by much. And the second full count of the inning. Outfield playing him pretty much straight away and deep on deck hitter. Tim Salmon. And the 3 2 foul back into the screen. Yes. Now at 3 2, what would we expect from Gordon? I think he'll do the same thing. He'll stay with the fastball, probably try to throw it up in the zone again, try to blow it by Edmonds. Terry Collins off three winning seasons with the Houston Astros, but never in the postseason. Brings a different level of intensity to the Angels. Gordon again with the 3 2, and this one is in the air and drifting foul as Cordero gives chase in about six or seven rows deep. Will Hasselman in the New starting catcher this year for Boston did a great job when Mike Stanley went down and really earned the job in September of 96. That's why he's behind the plate. When Boston got back in the pennant race, Hasselman was given a lot of credit by the pitching staff. For the way he calls the game, the way he sets up behind the plate. Hass sits low, and that's what you want to do as a catcher. Watch the target he gives. He gives a nice full full glove target. And the pitchers have confidence in throwing to Bill Hasselman. It's very important. Got a 15 mile an hour wind, 52 degrees tonight, and another one in the air, almost identical, a little bit more foul than the first. And the count remains full. Chilly night in Anaheim, in the low 50s. 20% chance, believe it or not, of showers. One thing Tommy does, Gordon, he'll, he throws a lot of pitches. He's a great athlete, though. Physically very strong. Not large in stature, but very toned, very strong, good off the mound. I think he'll go same pitch, fastball up. Just 5'9", 180 with a big right arm. That one is very deep to right field. Looking up is Pemberton, and it's gone. <laughs> Kevin well, here, called it. You have seen him do that before. <laughs> well, I've sat in that seat right there in the dugout that Jimmy Williams does. Tommy, I think, as we mentioned, uses a fastball too much sometimes when he gets two strikes. He went to the well one too many times. Edmonds likes the high fastball. But he's also capable of hitting those long high fly ball home runs and he did. Just a matter of whether See, he would catch up to it. Hasman sitting inside. He, he threw it where he wanted it. But that's also that's also where Edmonds wanted it. And uh, right at the retired number 29 of hitting coach Rod Carew. So as Tim Salmon that's steps power. in he sends one foul that's power on power there Dave that's that's what Tommy Gordon was doing and challenged Edmonds and he got him that's the classic matchup but I really feel that if, if Tom uses breaking ball a little bit more earlier in the ball game and I felt this a year ago and there's his first one Maybe keep the hitters off balance because good hitters are going to catch up with good fastballs you got to change speeds. 
Edmonds giving the Angels their first run. Salmon off a 286 season, 30 home runs back into the screen, 98 RBIs. A little bit of a come down from his uh, two strike shortened campaigns, but 30 home runs now for Salmon, three of the last four years, and he just missed his second straight 100 RBI campaign. Tim's a great all around player, too. He's a great outfielder, he's got a good throwing arm. He's the core of this Angel Ball Club this year. 1 2 is on the inside corner, and so uh, Gordon strikes out the side, but he allows the home run by Edmonds and through one. It is 1 to nothing for the Anaheim Angels over the Boston Red Sox. When you live and work in North Jersey, you need a radio station that lives and works in North Jersey, too. That's because New York Radio simply cannot target our communities. At Gold Hits 1500 WGHT, we bring you traffic, weather, the North Jersey News Center, all custom-tailored for North Jersey, plus all the great music from 1955 through 1985. Turn on to North Jersey's News and Oldies Station. Gold Hits 1500! My job is to complete the inquiry and the awarding of the Medal of Honor to Captain Karen Walden. I intend to do it. Captain Walden saved our lives. She's the first woman in history to be nominated for a Medal of Honor. You don't want to know what happened out there, sir. Yes, I do. Bad things happen in war. I'm going to find out the truth. I guarantee you that. Don't miss Courage Under Fire, now on pay-per-view. Come to Teenex Hotspot. Live like you want to live. Toronto! Live bands and DJs. Toronto! Fun filled atmosphere. Toronto! The Hotspot, Geronimo. 400 seater late in Teenex. Live like you want to live. Geronimo. Top of the second now for uh, the Red Sox and the Angels who got the Edmonds home run in their half of the first and a chance to check the Boston lineup facing uh, Mark Langston Garcia Parra Valentin Vaughn Stanley is the DH batting cleanup nearing at third Will Cordero trying left field and he will lead off this inning to be followed by Rudy Pemberton the right fielder Hasselman behind the plate and Shane Mack is in center tonight. Double and a walk, but nothing across in the uh, first inning for Boston. Cordero over from the National League from a year ago. Of course, learned how to play second base. Had his leg broken trying to turn a double play against Oakland. It was out the remainder of the 96 season. He's an excellent fastball hitter. Very tough to get inside on in the fastball. He'll turn on it. Breaking ball is over from Langston, who's ahead 0 2. Will Cordero also he will go the other way when he when he gets behind the count Will will use the field he's a, basically a 285 to 290 hitter in the big leagues still pretty young there he turned right there Mark Langston uh, last year six and five a career low for victories 482 ERA career low 18 games 116 hits allowed 123.1 innings also a career low and uh, just 83 strikeouts reaching to send that one foul Langston though has had two injury plague seasons as you look at some of the uh, still to be completed refurbishing of Anaheim Stadium <laughs> gonna be a nice ballpark already is a much improved park in its baseball only configuration. Another 0 2 offering and another foul ball. Langston at 94 missed time when bone chips were removed from his elbow. Knee cartilage was the problem last year. And he has had an ERA higher than 460 for three straight years. Those are not numbers you normally associate with Mark Langston. No, the injuries definitely took its toll. The legs are so important as a pitcher, especially. Obviously the arm. Cordero again uh, going after the 0-2 offering. Can't catch up to this one. The first strikeout for Langston. Lang Langston 
Langston has a good live fastball, led the American League several years in strikeouts when he was with Seattle. And now has really learned how to pitch a lot better than he did years ago. Years ago, he's strictly a power pitcher. Now he uses a curveball and a slider and mixes in his changeup. That last pitch had some run to it, was a two seam fastball, which means when you throw that two seam fastball, you're going to have some sink to it. A four seam is a power fastball, basically straight. Rudy Pemberton first ball hitting sends one the sky high it'll be handled by Dave Hollins who has to backpedal a bit furiously to catch back up to it. There is a little bit of a breeze as we said up to 15 miles per hour at game time. So the first two retired in the second and Bill Hasselman will be the hitter. Hasselman's a pretty good low ball hitter where pitchers try to get him out is pitch him up as a slight loop in his swing. It does have a lot of power when he gets it. Curve misses Hasselman a 274 hitter last year eight homers and 34 RBIs in 77 games. But about 127 points better against lefties than righties. He had 358 against left handed pitching last year. One thing about Bill Hasselman he's a real force in the clubhouse the players like him. When he was in the backup role, he took his role and did his job, never said a word, never complained. He earned a right to start this year. And it's important to have guys like that in your ball club that are not selfish, and Bill Hasselman is far from selfish. Jimmy Williams figuring to rely heavily on platoons, so uh, Mike Stanley will get some time, no doubt, behind the plate. First strike by Langston, three and one. All right here in a three and one count you probably want to go fastball away you don't want to come into his power by throwing in right back at him and bounces one in and the second base on balls allowed by Langston Vaughn walked in the first and was erased on a fielder's choice so the bottom of the order Shane Mack off two years in Japan which followed five years with the Minnesota Twins and Shane basically Used to run extremely well, steal some bases for him. Pretty good center fielder. The one concern, as we mentioned at the top uh, earlier, is that his arm is, is very sore. He's had a, a tough spring throwing the ball. And they're concerned about that, the Red Sox coaches that I talked to. Max, best year for the Twins, 92. He had 315. 16 homers, scored 101 runs. As their leadoff hitter, that is a uh, ball on the appeal. He did not go around. Now 33, it's his eighth major league season. Former UCLA All-American. Now Hasselman, he'll he'll steal a base now and then, occasionally on a first move. What that means is it on a left-hander only. When you're at first base, first move means as soon as that pitcher lifts his leg. The runner will take off. Now that's a sign given by the manager to the third base coach and to the player. And it's a gamble, but I don't know that Jimmy Williams will do it right here. Not at the moment. That one misses inside. Two and one. Throw gets away from Langston. A little bit too much on it from Leyland. What stylistic changes would you expect? From your style to Jimmy Williams style. Well I, I used to have a first move sign and I would give it to Hasselman. That's why I brought that up. Jimmy Williams the games that I've watched. I think he's trying to make some things happen. I watched one of their games in Las Vegas. Over the weekend and he tried to steal three bases and they were thrown out three times. Swing to miss two and two. But he's a baseball man. He's been around winning organizations in Toronto and Atlanta. Bobby Cox is a manager. You have to take your personnel and evaluate that and not run yourself out of an inning. And the base stealers that they have, Garcia Parra is probably their best one. Quick Lang check of Hasselman at first. Langston's not taking Hasselman for granted because they're smart too. They've seen him run before. They know that he can steal a base occasionally. has been working fairly quickly until now another 2 2 rides high and another full count. Not only one hit so far 
First inning double to Valentin. Vaughn and Hasselman have reached on walks. Shane Mack has gap power. They play him straight up defensively, both in the infield and the outfield. He gets a lot of balls to right center, left center. Hasselman going on the 3 2, and a line drive speared at second base by Alisea. Terrific defensive play to end the second. Still one to nothing, Angels. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Can I see the guitar? You play? I've been known to. That's cool. What's your name? It's on your guitar. Since 1873, original chords, pure and simple. A duck walked into a market to buy some lip balm. Night after Very night, these guys here, uh, take a lot of abuse. Lost in space. Here's a good one. But not as much as this wall. That's why it's been painted with Sherwin-Williams Everclean, a truly washable flat latex. If Everclean can handle this abuse, imagine how well it will work on your walls. Save $4 on Everclean and register to win during our inside-outside sweepstakes. You guys are a great crowd. Then again, to me, a great crowd's a crowd that doesn't throw very hard. Your Sherwin-Williams store. Where to get it? It's time for Bernie Williams to get into the batter's box and face a rock-hard ball coming at him from just 60 feet, 6 inches away. Battling sinkers, sliders, curves, knucklers, change-ups, fork balls, fastballs, and the occasional brush back. But Bernie doesn't sweat it. Hey, he's got a whole tenth of a second to react. ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball is brought to you by Anderson Windows. Worry-proof, time-proof. Anderson Windows. And by Original Coors. Pure and simple. The last real beer. Dave Barnett and Kevin Kennedy ready for the Angels half of the second. They lead one to nothing on a Jim Edmonds first inning home run. Sandwiched around three strikeouts by Tom Gordon. Dave Hollins, Garrett Anderson, and Eddie Murray. In the bottom of the second for Anaheim. Dave Hollins is a very selective hitter. Dave will work the count and he'll take a walk. You think of him as a power hitter and he is, but he's very selective for a power hitter. 262 last year, 16 homers, 78 runs driven in. One ball on the strike. Struck out a lot, 117 times in 149 games. And what I'm saying by saying he's selected, you're better off just throwing strikes because Dave's Dave's going to try to get his pitch until he gets deep in the count. Gordon still in love with the fastball. He threw 22 pitches in the first inning, Kevin. We counted two breaking balls. Right. I think Tommy's going to have to use that breaking ball. He's, like I said, he's got two breaking balls, a strikeout overhand curve and a little slurvy three-quarter type to get it over. Some can't bear to watch. One, two. Foul back off Hasselman. Hollins was right on that. This is a good count to do it. Throw his overhand right now. Throw his overhand curveball. The strikeout curve. If he misses, it's two and two, and then he can throw what he wants. This is the right count to throw that breaking ball for the strikeout. Try to bounce it on home plate. And he tried to. Saws him off. Half the bat up the first base line as Garcia Parra takes the weak pop up off the bat of Dave Hollins. We will be right here for Sunday Night Baseball, the ESPN Sunday Night Game of the Week, matching these Angels and the Cleveland Indians, now featuring Nat Williams, Dave Justice, and Marquise Chris of 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, the Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week. Garrett Anderson, left fielder, 285 last year with 12 homers, 72 RBIs. 95 season, he was second for American League Rookie of the Year. Just 24. L.A. native in his third year. That one hide 2 0. The one thing that our pitching coaches in Boston last two years when I was there they tried to work with him to 
or at least last year, excuse me, was working his change up a little bit more. It's such an important pitch, and especially in a count like this. I don't think Tommy will throw a change up here, but such a great pitch in a 2 0 count. At the knees, 2 and 1. And that's a fastball. <laughs> that's pretty much all we've seen from him. But you're going to see power, like I said, from Tom, and I think that's why he hasn't been the pitcher that he could be. Fastball usually up to the high 80s. And now three balls in the strike. You ever seen him this shy about the curve early in a game? We did last year, and that's that's one of the reasons that I think he didn't have the success that he could have had. He had a lot of run support, but really didn't have a, a great year. Once again, a little looper, not much contact at all, and handled off one hop, but not in time to get Anderson. So the chopper to Naring at third, beat out by Garrett Anderson. And the second base runner, if you count Edmonds on the home run of the first inning for Anaheim. That's a good play by Timmy Naring. He just beat it out. Anderson beat it out. There's nothing more that Tim Naring could do here. Perfect throw. Tim Naring's had a great arm. Tim Naring's an outstanding third baseman on all plays. One of the best I've seen going to his left or his right on one hop line drives, and I hope we see one later on tonight. I've never seen a guy pick as many balls going both ways as Tim Nairn. First at bat is an angel by Eddie Murray en route to the Hall of Fame. Fifth club for the now 41 year old in his 21st year. And those numbers compiled with Cleveland and Baltimore a year ago. 501 homers, 3,218 hits. Only Willie Mays and Hank Aaron also have 500 homers and 3,000 plus base hits. What besides uh, the obvious offense does he bring the Angels to? You He's think? a force, a presence in the clubhouse. He's quiet with the media, but in the clubhouse, the players like him. They love him. They know that he's been through the wars before. He's been on pennant winning teams. He's been on winners both at Baltimore and Cleveland and Dodgers. That's what they're looking for, some leadership, quiet leadership. It doesn't have to be vocal on the field. Guys like Hollins, Andy Murray, Leyritz. That's how Clemens was with Boston. Some of these guys that have won before, it, it brings the young guys along. The Angels lost a couple of years. They lost a pennant race a couple of years ago. This chopper handled by uh, Gordon and a bad throw at second. And the Angels have runners aboard at first and second with one out. This is a play Tom Gordon normally makes because he's a good quick fielder. Got very quick feet. It's a one hopper. Let's see what he does. Okay, what he did right there is just take the ball, fielded it, and just threw off his right foot. A lot of times pitching coaches will tell you to shuffle your feet to gather, get yourself balanced. Tommy was a little bit off balance and threw the ball wide of the bag. He had time with Eddie Murray running at first base to, to shuffle his feet and get, him, get his feet underneath him for better balance. And I tell you what, Garcia Parra almost dragged his foot across the bag as he was making the catch, and it would have been a spectacular force at second. So runners aboard at first and second with one out as Jim Leyritz takes his first cuts as an angel. Remember the world champs last year turned the World Series around with uh, the now famous home run off Mark Walters. Just as it appeared, the Angels were about to take an insurmountable lead. There's the curveball to Jim Leyritz. This is a situation where Gordon has to change speeds against Jimmy Leyritz. He's capable of hitting home runs, going the other way. They're actually playing him a little bit to right center, so they're probably going to pitch him away. That one hit fairly well. Almost straight away center field. Mack is there on the warning track. As Anderson moves along to third. Well hit ball by Leyritz. Who had just seven homers last year. Well, during, during the strike year of 1994, Leyritz was really coming into the, his own. The Yankees were leading the American League. Leyritz was hitting a lot of home runs. Here's a pitch for Leritz right here. Asselman actually comes inside, and Jimmy Leritz just missed that. Actually, the ball was a little bit off the end of his bat. If he had thrown the ball exactly where Asselman set up, Leritz might have hit that ball out. 
So they're on the corners with two outs as Gary D. Sarcina will bat 256, five homers, 48 RBIs last year. And Naring, a third baseman, is up even with the bag at the edge of the grass looking for a possible bunt. D. Sarcina could do that, try to bunt for a hit to get the run in. D. Sarcina likes to go the other way a lot, and they're holding the runner on Eddie Murray at first base with a big hole on the right side. This is high, 2 0. Oh. D. Sarcina. Had a rough year last year, not really the same as before he tore a ligament in his left thumb late in the 95 season. His average from that point down 51 points. Not much of an on base percentage, not much power. Takes again, and it's three balls and no strikes. And I believe with Erstad on deck that they'll make him take all the way here. With some hitters, you'll let him swing 3 0, but. Probably not with De Sarcina and a pretty good hitter on deck. Rudy Pemberton is a little bit deep in right field. De Sar hits a lot of balls right in front of the outfielders. Went after it. He sure did. Handled by Garcia Parra for the force at second. And the gamble on 3 0 does not work for De Sarcina. Still 1 0 Anaheim. Introducing the ultimate stuff by Hager. If you only had one thing to wear, this would be it. Hey, Brett. These guys have a beer menu. This beer is made with lingonberries. Ooh, and this one has a dash of espresso. Aura of forbidden coconut. Two cores. Since 1873. Original cores. Pure and simple. Peach medley. You see this? This beer has beer in it. There's this college team I practice with. Each one is out to prove that they can hit the Ryan Express. After a day of fastballs, it's Advil for me. On tough pain, two Advil work better than any two Tylenol. I love that sound. Advil just works better. The $5 bill, so many nicknames. The Fiver, the Five Spot, Five bucks. And now, Red Roof Inn's own version. Bobby? The Red Roof Finn. Play on words. That's $5 in cash that you'll get every night you stay at Red Roof Inn's when you check in with this coupon. To check out improvements going on now nationwide, get your $5 cash back coupon in Tuesdays and Thursdays USA Today. I thank you, and he thanks you. In our ESPN studios, and Kevin knows walks will kill you. Scott Sanders walked two and faced Tino Martinez. Former Mariner goes yard. Three run shot. Seattle has added one. Now the Yankees up on top in a little different scenario than last night. Dave and Kevin. All right, Carl. Long ball is accounted for the only run in this one through two innings. The home run by Jim Edmonds. Red Sox survived the throwing error by Gordon. As uh, Terry Collins. Going aggressive by letting uh, De Sarcina swing away at 3 0 and led to the inning inning force at second. Garcia Parra, who flied to right to begin the game. And that's the manager's prerogative. That's why he gets paid to make those decisions, and sometimes he'll get second guessed. Some managers would have taken De Sarcina, had De Sarcina take the pitch there and let Erstad have a chance for a big inning, but that's his choice. Swing and a miss, count even at 1 and 1. What's fascinating about baseball is what is too aggressive a style for some clubs exactly. is exactly what others are looking for. And apparently that's what Terry wants to bring to this ball club and show people right now that we're going to take advantage and try to be aggressive. No matter who it is. And some clubs seem to bounce from uh, an easygoing manager to a much more intense guy. Former commissioner Peter Ubroth on hand for opening night. And that seems to be what uh, both the Astros and allowing Collins to go and the Angels by picking him up have in mind a little uh, less intense style for Houston. Well Terry's basically grown up in the National League. He was with Jimmy Leyland as a, as a coach. He managed three years in Houston. In this league you don't have the pitcher hitting. You've got the DH and I think Terry will find that as it goes on. 
Swing it on three and one, and this one sends Salmon back a couple of steps in front of the warning track. So Garcia Parra twice flying out to Tim Salmon and right. My point being on Terry Collins is that he's trying to be aggressive, and that's great. But to find out in this league, there's a lot more runs scored, and one through nine, there are basically no outs in the lineup. Here's John Valentin. Well, the coaching staff as well with a strong National League background. Larry Boa, Dave Parker, his base coaches. They'll have some adjusting to do. A lot of new personnel to uh, learn who's got an arm you can run on, who you don't mess with. That's right. And there's good scouting, good information that's given to them by a variety of people. Their coaches, their minor league people that have been here before. Joe Madden, Marcel Latchman, Joe Madden, the bench coach. Marcel Latchman was the pitching coach for several managers and last couple of years was a manager, of course. Now, that's a little unusual, too. Went from managing, resigned in August, to now he's the pitching coach. And I think that's his best role. I think he likes that. And Terry was very comfortable. Terry Collins very comfortable having Latchman back. A loyal organization man and a good man. 3-0 and to John Valentin, who owns the only Boston Bays hit, a double. Valentin did something that he doesn't usually do. First pitch is go the other way off Langston in the first inning. Once again, swinging away at 3-0. and John... A lot of times, especially in Fenway Park, of course, he's a little bit different hitter. He'll, he'll look for that ball to pull because the fence is so high and the wall is so short in Fenway Park. But on the road, he will go the other way more. But it surprised me a little bit. First pitch out of the chute, fastball away. He hit it very well into the corner. He's capable of doing that. That one misses high. Let's check in again with Carl Ravage in the studio. All right, Dave, and let's check in on the Indians opening their season against the A's. Ariel Prieto digging himself a hole. Julio Franco drives in a run. Franco knocks in a run with a single. So does Manny Ramirez. So does Sandy Alomar Jr. And Cleveland picking up where it left off. They're up 4 nothing. Boy, just about the only recognizable names for the Athletics anymore are the reunited Bash brothers. With Canseco back to uh, team up with Mark McGuire. Mo Vaughn walked in his first appearance, looks at a ball. Now, you had a great reunion with him before the game. Uh, I did. Mo and I had a very good rapport. Mo was the MVP in 1995. Last year had another fantastic year. Actually had better numbers last year than 95 and didn't win the MVP. But he's the heart and soul of the ball club. He speaks very frankly as people that know him and have heard him know that. But I told Jimmy, he's had a good report with Jimmy Williams as well this spring. And I told Jimmy Williams that he's going to play hard for you. When he gets between the lines, he plays as hard as anybody. That check of Valentin gets away from the first baseman, Erdstadt, who will make a throw, but not nearly in time, at second. Well, there's a new first baseman over there in Erdstadt. J.T. Snow was as good as anybody in the American League defensively. Let's see what happened here. Might have hit Valentin on the head or the helmet. No, it didn't. He just missed it. Erstad just missed the ball and put the tag down too quick. And it, it he's going to have to get used to the position and the pitchers. And Langston is very quick. So that's just a learning process. That's just a lack of experience right now. That, error, that, play. that, that was a perfect throw. Definitely charged to Erstad. So Valentin at second as uh, Vaughn takes strike one. One ball and one strike. Terry Collins does feel that Erstad can play there. He likes him defensively. Talked to Terry before the game. So that's just a matter of playing games. That's nothing really at this point in the season, obviously, to worry about. Wouldn't have uh, let J.T. Snow go to San Francisco if they didn't think he could play at first. That's absolutely right. And they've got a solid outfield in Anderson and Salmon and Edmonds. And Erstad's a good hitter, and they had to find a spot for him. Vaughn, and you mentioned his numbers last year, 326, 44 homers, 143 driven in, 95 walks. Nearly half his at-bats, in fact, he either walked, struck out, or homered. Struck out 154 times. The interesting thing that I think this year is to see what kind of power numbers he'll have without Jose Canseco behind him. On the ground for DeSarcina at short, and the easy toss to Erstadt as Valentin moves up. And that's not a lack of respect for anybody else hitting behind Mo, like Mike Stanley or Reggie Jefferson, which will be the two number four hitters, depending on the 
pitcher. Stanley will play against lefties. Reed Jefferson will come in against the right-handers. But Jose had a presence in the lineup behind Mo Vaughn, even though he was hurt many times. Mo hit. 31 home runs, I believe, in the first half last year. And when Jose went down, he had two home runs in two months. And there's a difference in the way you manage against a team when you have two Bash brothers, as you say, like now it's going to be McGuire and Conseco in Oakland. Ball one to Mike Stanley. Fly out to center his first time up. 270 last year with 24 home runs and 69 runs batted in. Now, Mike is a very clutch hitter. He loves this situation. He's just looking to go up the middle with a base hit here. He's not looking to hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's a very good situation hitter. He studies the pitchers extremely well. And I even told Mike before the game, he's got some secrets. He, he really studies the pitchers from the bench and tries to see if they're doing something different when they throw a fastball versus a curveball. And Mike Stanley's as good as anybody I've talked to or been around about seeing that. So sometimes he knows what the pitch is before it's on the way. Three balls and no strikes. The ERA with him catching last year, 534, and with Hasselman, 457. How much would you expect Stanley to catch this year? I don't think he's going to catch a lot. They've got three on their roster. Scott Hattieberg has had a couple of good years in AAA. He made the club. So really, Mike Stanley is going to do a lot of DHing and very occasional first base. Last two three no counts. Uh, the green light was on, and this time Stanley takes the four pitch walk. So they're on the corners well, with you, two out for you, Tim Nearing. You can do that when you got a Tim Nearing hitting behind him. In the middle of your lineup, Stanley, that ball was a little bit off the plate and wasn't the pitch he was looking to hit. Didn't want to get himself out. And right here, Jimmy Lairitz is going to give the signs to throw through, most likely in this situation. This early in the ball game, you don't want to get another man into scoring position. So what, that's what the catcher is doing in front of home plate. He's letting the infielders know whether he's throwing to second or holding the ball and faking and throwing to third in case of a double steal. Nearing end of the first with a fielder's choice. Breaking ball over for strike one. And Langston got Nearing to roll over on an outside pitch to end a scoring threat to shortstop. Normally, Timmy would try to take that ball, stay inside it with his hands, and drive that ball the other way into right field. But Langston made a good pitch. Got him to hit his pitch the first time up. Fastball misses. Nearing is the senior member of the Sox now. He's been with them since 90, and uh, that makes him the player with the longest tour of duty. Turned down a chance to sign with Cleveland, re-signed with Boston. Two different seasons, really, for him last year. 324 average before the All-Star break, and just 243 after. Erstad giving chase to this one in uh, foul ground, as is the second baseman, Alisea, and a sliding attempt doesn't come up with the ball for Luis. And Nearing that, Laring that time tried to stay inside of the ball. Let's watch the Erstad. That's a very tough play. This, it is a second baseman's ball right here. And Alisea just really ran short, ran out of room. That, the second baseman on that particular pop-up has a better angle than the first baseman returning and going straight back. That's the right guy to catch it if he can get to it. Talking about Nearing. He tried to, when I say try to stay inside the ball with his hands, if you can try to watch that as the ball's leaving Langston's hands, you, you try to have the barrel of the bat. Okay, there's fastball up. As opposed to breaking your wrist too soon where you roll over the ball. And I know I'm explaining that over the air here. I'm following you. Keep going. You're hot. But you try to you try to keep your hands inside the baseball, just exactly how I say. And then the barrel actually drags a hair, and then when he, the hands roll, they don't actually roll; they drive through the ball, and you get backspin, as opposed to rolling over weak ground balls. And taking his time, Stanley at first, Valentin at third, with two gone and the 3 2 pitch coming. Swung on and missed. For the second strikeout by Langston, through two and a half, one to nothing, Angels. 
When Sam was hurting, he'd take Tylenol. But hours later, he'd have to take more. Then he'd discover to leave. He could take just two all day. Tylenol was taking up to eight. Aleve works up to 12 hours. Aleve, all day strong, all day long. More people who make a living with their tools buy their tools at the Home Depot. And with our incredible selection, all at guaranteed low prices, it's a pretty powerful argument for why you should shop here too. The Home Depot, where people who know their stuff buy their stuff. They're coming. One after the other. HBO's biggest season of box office hits ever. A billion dollars of box office. Coming your way. The biggest movies ever. And they're only coming to one place. little celebration is brought to you by the people who've helped so many other people understand and enjoy cellular phones. Radio Shack, America's number one retailer of cellular phones. Surprised? We're not. We're just happy. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. ESPN Wednesday Night Baseball is brought to you by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. In the Angel half of the third inning, the top of the order due up against Flash Gordon, Erstad, Alisea, and Edmonds. Trying to add to a one to nothing Anaheim lead. Gordon struck out Erstad to, to begin the game, then struck out Alisea and Salmon. Edmonds, though, got to him for a home run. This guy's a good athlete. This guy was a number one pick overall in the nation a couple of years ago. Played outfield. Now he's converting to first base. He's going to learn. He's going to learn from Eddie Murray, Larry Boa, great infielder in his Philadelphia days. And that first inning home uh, error is really nothing to worry about. No well, question about his athleticism when you consider he only played American Legion ball. Handled on two hops at second by Valentin, and Erstad is 0 for 2. Let's check in with Carl in the studio. All right, Dave, and fans of the American League, it's unfortunate they don't get to see this guy enough. Ken Caminiti, the Mets already up 1-0. Uh-oh. Not anymore. That shot, first of the year for the can man, and the pod jumped back out on top, 2-1, to one, Dave. Boy, the Padres had the back-to-back-to-back uh, -to -back -to -back home runs yesterday in their opening victory over the Mets. None of them, though, by Caminiti yesterday. Alisea looks at ball one. Louis a very good fastball hitter and particularly from the left side. And shows surprising power at times. Five home runs a year ago. But a good number eight hitter for the cards and a great September 345 in their uh, postseason run. And he said he was a little mentally disappointed last year when he was released. From the Red Sox and went to St. Louis with Tony La Russa and really didn't play well and admittedly so. He's very happy to be here with Terry Ka Collins and the opportunity with the Anaheim Angels. And I think he'll do a great job. Unfortunately, they have him because Velarde is out with a serious injury. Got to get the new bat ready after breaking the old one. Louis always hit very well against the Angels in this ballpark as well in Boston two years ago where he hit 10 home runs and in one game he hit one home run left handed and one right handed against Texas in Texas. This is a good sign. This is a good pickup for the Angels. A veteran that knows how to play. Three balls and a strike. He likes the fastball. He's you can get Louie out on off speed stuff but you're just, I don't think you're going to see Gordon throw that. I think you see Tommy throw fastball right here. Louie can hit the fastball if it's middle in. Walked him. Jim Edmonds with a man aboard as he hits for the second time. Here's what happened 
when he stepped in in the first inning against Flash Gordon. Well, let's see how Tom Gordon pitches him now. Tried to go fastball up. He got it up, but so did Edmonds. Right off the number 29. And that's the book. You try to pitch Edmonds up, but when you make a mistake, and that really wasn't a mistake, that was up out of the zone, but Edmonds is capable of hitting that, as we talked about earlier. And that was right after he had failed to catch up to two previous fastballs and fouled them the other way, foul uh, down the left field line. We got all of that one. But Tom showed him all fastballs in that at bat, and good hitters are going to catch up with that eventually. That's why he's hit 30 home runs before. Starts it with heat at the knees. 27 homers a year ago. I don't think you'll see him get six or seven straight fastballs in this at bat, especially now that Tom's ahead of the count. Price see his breaking ball. Fastball away. Bluff at first. One and one. All but two of Edmonds' homers a year ago were against right handers. And he hit about 160 points better against right handers. Edmonds had a wrist problem that really affected him last year as well, and a back problem. Still good numbers now in his fourth year. Orange County native from Fullerton, check again at first of Alisea. Well, right there you saw Alisea flinch. It looked like a play might have been on. This is a, not really a hit and run man that you want to do with, right here with Edmonds. So Alisea either might be on his own as far as stealing or was given a straight steal sign. With one out and Edmonds up, you really don't want to put a hit and run on and take the bat out of his hands. And Gordon's concerned about him. That quick move you see in Tom do is given from the bench to the catcher. The catcher flashes a sign and tells Tom Gordon to step off quickly to see what, and that allows the manager to see what the runner's doing. If the runner flinches, now he might call a pitch out after that, assuming he's going to run. And it's the other manager's job to take the sign off. And that's the cat and mouse game that goes on in this sequence between managers. So when you see a pitcher step off quickly like that, it's usually coming from the bench. Or when you see him throw over, many times it's coming from the bench, from the manager. And of course, the pitch outs usually are coming from the bench. Those are all to minimize the running game for the opposition. Steps off again. And that's what he's doing. And if you do it a little bit too much, you lose concentration, and that's where you can make a mistake at home plate. Alice is not a burner. He can steal a base, but he can get thrown out. He's not a burner. So right here, I'd concentrate more on Jim Edmonds. Alice going, and that one's going to find the hole on the left side and send Luis all the way to third. Well executed by Edmonds who was two for two and the Angels have him on the corners with one out in the third. Well, this is it. This is a curveball. Tom did try to go to this curveball but Edmonds put the bat on it stayed inside the ball and went the other way. Didn't try to pull that breaking ball. Saw the hole that Garcia Parr left. And the shortstop side because he had to cover second because the runner was in motion. Nice piece of hitting. And he's got runners at first and third. Terry Collins is definitely bringing some National League style here. And he showed very early that he's going to have hitters swinging 3 0, and he's going to put some hit and runs on with anybody. So here's Salmon with one out. And Hasselman wants time, a little conference. Salmon struck out to end the first. And you play that type of game like Terry's doing right now and establish that early in the season and early in, the, in this game. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense because they don't know what you're going to do. If Terry does that one through nine, I know where he learned that from. Del Crandall, who we both played for in the minor leagues, Del would run anybody in the lineup when he was managing Albuquerque. Anybody? Anybody, depending on the situation or the count. And it really created a lot of, a lot of fun on the bench because you never took anything for granted. Ball one to Salmon. Great power to all fields. 30 homers a year ago. I like that style of play because it gets everybody in the flow of the game. You know anybody might do anything at any time and I think Terry's going to establish himself quickly here in this league. 
About 10 rows deep, one ball and one strike. Well, it's more entertaining style even when it fails, and we've seen it fail already. It really is, and that's where, you know, he's going to get second guess, but I like his style. I think Terry's, I think he's going to do a good job. This, they need that here in Anaheim. They've tried the other way to play for big innings, not putting enough people in motion. Terry is going to put people in motion. Two balls and a strike. A lot of room for Salmon to shoot uh, at the left center gap as Mack plays him to go the other way. Cordero even in left quite a bit off the line. Check of Edmonds. And now what he's got him doing, he's, he's got he's got Jimmy Williams worried. And Tom Gordon, he's got those guys worried. And Tommy's thrown over there and taking his concentration away from home plate. And that's the other advantage when you have a running game. Somewhere you're going to lose your concentration. Wings and miss, and it's two and two. And over the course of the season, you're going to make a lot of mistakes at home plate. It's not to say that you don't concentrate on the runner, but you got to pick your spots. That's his overhand power curveball, and he threw it on a 2 1 count, but he had to. He's in a situation where Salmon, if he hits a home run, it's a three run home run. So he's got to pitch this guy extremely tough. Now you can either go up and in on Tim right here, right back to the curveball, power curveball in the dirt. That's where you would go. Yeah, still mindful of Edmonds at first, though. Two curveballs, really, from Gordon. And right now he's in the situation to throw the strikeout curveball. A ground ball to short or a strikeout curve is what you're looking for right here. Well, tried to come back inside come on him. In. Now he's going to put uh, Edmonds in motion, I got to believe for sure. Collins will. Three, two, one out. What type of pitch? Tommy, I would call a curveball right here on Salmon. I'd throw that strikeout curveball. You got to go for the punch out. Because if he hits the ball on the ground, if he throws a fastball and he hits it, the run's going to score. So you got to go for your curveball and the strikeout right here. And a curveball is his strikeout pitch. The runner going and it's fouled into the dugout behind third. Rattling around. All See, the, the, the count dictates that. Now it's three and two. You know the runner pretty much is going to go, which he was moving. So a ground ball, the run will score because you can't make the play at second base on Edmonds. You have to throw to first base. That's why pitching ahead of the count is so key. He's got 18 more pitches this inning for Tommy, and that's uh, close to 60 pitches, which is averaging 20 pitches an inning. That's a lot. 15 pitches an inning is a general guideline for a manager and a pitching coach to keep his pitchers in good rhythm in professional baseball. Anything more than that over the course of the game, you're going to end up throwing less innings. Angels already up one to nothing. Again, Edmonds moves. Ball four. They're loaded. Tom elected to go back to the fastball. I, I personally would have stayed right with the curveball and, and gone all the way with it because at worst, you're going to have bases loaded anyway. And now he's got himself in a real hole. Third walk allowed. By Tom Gordon. And Joe Kerrigan, the pitching coach, is out. Kerrigan right now is, is telling him just that. He's got to change speeds more. And I, th I think they're going to have to call some pitches from the bench. Dave Hollins, again, as I said earlier in the ballgame, very patient hitter. You're not going to see Dave swing necessarily at the first pitch. You're going to see him work the count. He knows that Gordon is throwing a lot of pitches. And Dave is the ideal guy to be in this situation because he's a, he's a clutch hitter. He has a lot of power, but he's patient at the plate. He works the count, and he's going to make Gordon make a mistake here, try to make a mistake here. And Kerrigan's telling him that as well. Kerrigan knows him from the National League. Hollins was in Philadelphia when Joe Kerrigan was a pitching coach for Montreal. Chance for a nice early lead if Hollins can come through. Looks at a ball. Loaded up. One out of the third. Now you try to throw a two seam fastball here and what that is is you grip the ball across the two seams where when it rotates that's all you see the red of the two seams one time. And that means that the ball is going to sink down and away from Dave. I mentioned earlier four seam fastball is gripped across the big seams of the baseball and when it rotates one time you can count one two three four you'll see four seams rotate in one revolution of the ball. Two seamer versus four seamer. Two seamer has sinking type action. That's what he should be throwing here when he's going away. Just 
Price misses the outside corner. 2-0. That's Vaughn Eshelman. Vaughn Eshelman, a lefty. Pretty good fastball. And slow breaking ball, a little slider. Been a starter before. He's come out of the pen. He's up already early in the ballgame. 2 0 pitch straight up. Hasselman running out of room up against the screen and it just clears the screen by a couple of feet. That was Dave's pitch. And Gordon's basically going with his four seam right out. He does throw a little two seamer but not as effective as some pitchers. He likes to go to his strength. Sometimes his strength gets him in trouble. Collins is usually much better though from the right side. He had 326 last year against lefties. 239 against righties. And Hollins has had the handmade bone in both wrists broken a couple of years ago, unbelievably. Going fastball away here. 2 1 pitch, bounce to second. Forced there, throw to first, pulls Vaughn off the bag, and the run comes home. Alisea scores, and it's 2 to nothing, Anaheim. Well, that was the right pitch sequence. Tried to get that sinker so he could get the ground ball with the bases loaded by staying away. And let's see what Val steps up with a right right foot and just throws wide. And he's in, he's in a new position. And that's going to take some time as well. He's a veteran player, but he's been a shortstop. He's been on the left side of the infield all these years. And throwing from the right side of the infield now is a whole new ball game. Throwing across your body. When you're a shortstop, you got the play in front of you. It's a whole different throw. He's throwing across his body, going away from the play as, as opposed to toward the play. So they're on the corners for Garrett Anderson. Now that's got to be disgusting for Gordon. You get the pitch that you need to get the inning ending double play. That, that was good strategy. Joe Kerrigan went out there. They had a game plan. It was the right strategy. You got to throw a ground ball pitch to Seamer. He did throw it. He got it where he wanted. Collins rolled it over, and that's the frustration of not being able to turn two. Now Hollins to worry about at first. And if you look at Hasselman, he'll he'll give a sign. Give a one little wiggle right there, and that might be a throw. No, it isn't. Just inside one and one. But what what I was anticipating was possibly a throw over. Usually when you see something different with instead of a straight one, it's either a, a sinking uh, fastball that he wants. There's two different fastballs guys will throw, and that's usually what it is. But they're worried about the double steal. Collins has shown he's going to do anything. And even with Garrett Anderson up now, I wouldn't be surprised at anything out of Terry. And that's going to make it fun for this, the fans watching this. Yeah, we're three Angel innings, less than three innings into the first game of the season, and the managerial stamp is already uh, pretty firmly applied. I think that's it. great. And Hollins can steal a base. When you get the pitcher and the catcher thinking about it in the defense, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Well, anything could happen at any time. You can't lay back with this club with this type of manager. Anderson badly fooled on that one. Count runs even at two and two. Edmonds at third, Hollins at first, Alisea is home. Now they try to get inside a lot on Anderson too to get him out with two strikes. I think that's where Hass is going to go. Fastball up. That no, was a curveball. Speared by Vaughn on one hop. Red Sox are out of it, but they allow the run on the Hollins fielder's choice. We're through three complete at Anaheim Stadium. Anaheim leading Boston. Two to nothing. John Mellencamp. The Grammy nominee. A rare concert event at the theater at Madison Square Garden. The Mr. Happy Go Lucky Theater Tour. By overwhelming demand, a fourth show, April 15th. All those hits. Plus songs from the new album, Mr. Happy Go Lucky. With special guest Amanda Marshall and Y Store. Tickets for the fourth show are available now. John Mellencamp. Get closer to the music. Last Friday... While his family waited anxiously, Walt Taylor underwent open-heart surgery at the Valley Hospital. His surgeons were using a modified technique developed by a Valley physician so that more people may avoid the large incision in the chest, speeding recovery by weeks. Which means that today, just a few days after surgery, Walt's family is still waiting for a homecoming. 
Valley Health. Call and we'll tell you more. John Mellencamp. The Grammy nominee. A rare concert event at the theater at Madison Square Garden. The Mr. Happy Go Lucky Theater Tour. By overwhelming demand, a fourth show, April 15th. All those hits. Plus songs from the new album, Mr. Happy Go Lucky, with special guest Amanda Marshall and Y Stewart. Tickets for the fourth show are available now. John Mellencamp, get closer to the music. But 25 years later, what is the legacy of Title IX? Join ESPN for an in-depth look at the changing landscape of women's athletics. Outside the Lines, Women in Sports at the Crossroads, Monday at 7.30 on ESPN. Angels have gotten to Flash Gordon twice for a 2 to nothing lead. And uh, Mark Langston set to work to Cordero, Pemberton, and Hasselman in the top half of the fourth inning. I'll tell you, I, I like what Terry Collins is doing, establishing his game, National League style. Well, <laughs> this is now a game and a third in your new position. I, I got to tell you, great reviews from here. You enjoying this? I'm having a lot of fun. It's just managing from up here and uh, just being able to explain some plays and some strategy. It's a lot of fun. Well, they're uh, giving I'm you stuff it. to work with, You're, too, which is cool. Well, when Terry Collins is doing the things he's doing, it's, it's kind of my, my style, you know, making some things happen. It's fun to watch a manager be aggressive. Will Cordero struck out to lead off the second inning. Langston opens with a strike here. See, people say, well, you, you don't have a running team. How come you run? And, and Terry is establishing the situation and the count will dictate what he's going to do. And his personnel is part of it. The, the situation of the game dictates it as well. And the count, three and two, three and one. Put people in motion. They don't have to be burners to do it. Put the pressure on the opposition. Oh, and two to Cordero. And that one misses. Cordero acquired from the Expos, moved to second last year, but as you said, the fractured right leg in May. Didn't return till August, lost the job in the meantime to Jeff Fry. So with the move by Valentin, he's now at left, and he has uh, struck out twice. All right. The tradition, as uh, presented by Countrywide on ESPN Senior Golf tomorrow and Friday, 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. It's the first major of the season for the seniors. Jack Nicklaus leading the field with Trevino, Floyd, and Player. Scottsdale, Arizona, the senior PGA Tour tomorrow and Friday at 4 Eastern here on ESPN. Rudy Pemberton. We saw it last time up, usually a first ball hitter. And there he goes again. Right after this one. Rudy's very aggressive. Good, pretty good fastball hitter. Had a great September last year when he came up for the Red Sox. I believe hit close to or over 500. 512. 512, there it is. 21 for 41. And a lot of that was just by being aggressive. Really, as the season goes on, the league finds out about him. He's going to have to be more selective. That was one of the problems in AAA, why he didn't come up sooner for the Red Sox. But he's got a lot of ability. Chilly night, as we said, in the low 50s and dropping in Anaheim. Fans came prepared. The 1 1 pitch. It's going to go foul just behind the uh, foul pole and about 10 rows deep, and it's 1 and 2. Pemberton has, has uh, had part of nine years in the minors and a total, including this at bat, of 73 at bats in the majors, but he's hit well up here. 423 is major league average coming in. Defense has been a problem. Some have questioned his attitude. He got a chance to start for Detroit opening day a couple of years ago and had a couple of hits and played a couple of games and all of a sudden that was that and back, back to the minor leagues. I can't answer the reason why. All I know is when he was in Boston, he was a joy to have on the club. Just saw a good look at uh, the pond, home of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, just beyond center field nearby. Three balls and two strikes now to Rudy. Langston is really tough on right-hand hitters when he throws that power slider down in on, you call it a back foot slider, down and into right-handers. Very tough pitch. Somebody's going to throw a fastball here, though. 
Should be easy for DeSarcina at short. The throw over a step ahead of Pemberton for out number two. As we again send it to Carl in the studio. All right, David, let's take a look again at the Indians and the A's. And what a luxury for Mike Hargrove. The number eight hitter is Kevin Mitchell. He had a tremendous spring, and it has carried over. So they can single you to death, and they can homer you to death. It's 6-3 as Baroa has just gone deep. Meantime, Tino Martinez back in Seattle, already with a three-run shot and a two-run shot. He's got five RBI, and they are up 5-1. They're flying out everywhere. It's Bill Hasselman <laughs> swings and uh, fouls one off at the plate. Walked in the second inning. We have a home run tonight from Edmonds for the Angels in their first inning. Alice has scored in the third. They lead two to nothing. Nobody on, two outs. Top of the fourth for Boston. Oh and two. There's a team that will not play much of the little National League ball. The Indians. No, That's I don't ridiculous. believe so. I don't believe so. They got Matt Williams, Tomey, Kevin Mitchell. They're going for the fences. 20, 30 homers, just about every spot up and down the lineup. One ball and two strikes. Do you see any change from uh, the out of this world? Power numbers last year, the all time record for home runs. Three teams broke what was the single season record. I think a lot of it is just the pitching. I think there's with the expansion. Well, pretty good pitching by Mark Langston, who leads two to nothing. Thank you. Today, people who didn't send the money, Western Union, and the heartbreak it caused. Why the disguise, mystery guest? I, I blew it. Can you share with us? My mom needed money. And, and you didn't use Western Union. Right. <laughs> so to get the money, she had to hitchhike across three counties, right. took two pickups and an 18-wheeler. That's no way to treat your mama, man. And how does mom feel? Oh. My own son. Hey, it's your money. Use Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. There's this college team I practice with. Each one is out to prove that they can hit the Ryan Express. I'm out to prove they can't. <laughs> After a day of fastballs, it's Advil for me. Nothing has shown me that it works better or lasts longer than Advil. For sore muscles, more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever. <laughs> I love that sound. Advanced medicine for pain. And for a cold, try Advil cold and sinus. It's tough on colds like Advil is on pain. Since its introduction, the John Deere STX-38 has undergone a few improvements, like a tighter turning radius, increased horsepower, larger tires, and much, much more. Maybe that's why it has the highest trade-in value in its class. And yet, even after all this, one thing is still the same, the price. But there's always room for improvement. Introducing the lowest price ever, just $1,899. It was, after all, the only thing left to improve. A few words from our high-performance expert. <clears throat> Sit, go. Says, go. It's a job, boy. Angel half of the fourth now. Eddie Murray to be followed by Jim Leyritz and Gary DeSarcina. Two to nothing lead for Anaheim. And we were talking about home runs. There is a 15th all-time home run man in Major League history right here. 501, Eddie Murray. Well, you were touching, Dave, on the pitching and the home runs in the American League last year and all the records being broken. I think it's it's location. It's young guys that are up that years ago before expansion would be in double-A AA or triple-A. They used to say you need six to 700 innings of pitching in the minor leagues to learn how to pitch. Now you guys got half a year. Or a year and a half and they're up in the big leagues trying to learn how to pitch and it's it's location and pitch selection as well ballparks are part of it the weightlifting is part of it there's there's guys today that work out all year round years ago they didn't used to years ago Bobby Gritch uh, then an angel unusual in that he was one of the first guys to go to the way some back uh, liner handled easily by Garcia Parra in short left field that's exactly right and now everybody works out all year round. The hitters, guys like Conseco, McGuire, they, they stay in shape all year round. 
25, 30 years ago used to go to spring training to get in shape. Now you better be in shape. There's just too much competition. Two years or next year, 98, there's going to be expansion again, and you're going to see the pitching thin out even more. So the records could continue to fall, you think? They could. Jim Leyritz fly to center in the second. That's why a guy like Roger Clemens is so valuable. What he brings to the ball club. He just knows how to pitch. Along with his great stuff, he knows how to pitch. You're asking young guys to be in roles as a two and three, four starters that normally would be fifth starters or long men in the bullpen. And so they're learning in the big leagues how to do it. Think of some of the staffs of what used to be mediocre teams 15 and 20 years ago. And uh, what were then number four pitchers would be aces today. Absolutely. That's why you can look to the Dodgers, their player development system. Those guys log a lot of innings in the minor leagues. They usually go step by step rookie ball, A ball, double A, triple A before they come up to the big leagues. There it's couldn't hold up on that one. Two and two. And it's not just the pitching part it's the feeling their position it's holding runners it's knowing about location as I said earlier staying away from big hitters keep them in the big part of the ballpark opposite field Layrich retired the fourth strikeout victim of Tom Gordon and this all depends on the situation in the game I've seen too many guys on two and oh counts try to come inside and fool a guy and he turns on and hits a home run when he could have gone away to try to get a strike or keep the guy in the big part of the ballpark hit at the opposite field. It's much tougher to hit a home run opposite field than it is to pull one. That was a good breaking ball by Gordon who has shied away from what's normally his best pitch for the most part this evening. So the bottom of the order De Sarcina sends a base hit to right center field. Well it's definitely for Tom Gordon it's his strikeout pitch when he needs a big strikeout there's not a handful of guys that have a better overhand curveball than Tom Gordon got tight tight spin on it. Very hard to pick up, and the bottom drops out of it. So I feel he, he should have used it more last year. I feel he should have used it more tonight. The Sarcina aboard with two outs, and the top of the order, Darren Erstad, the new first baseman for the Angels. Well, Terry, Terry, show, Terry Collins is showing it. He may run at any time. This wouldn't surprise me here if he picks a spot. Not immediately. Because at worst, you have your leadoff hitter starting the next inning. So in the right situation, when he gets a little deeper in a count, when he tries to pick a breaking ball count, Terry may put the steal on, try to get him in a scoring position, get one more run here. Well, wary of that uh, very prospect. And you when I say, uh, excuse me, Dave, when I, and when I say a breaking ball count, I mean, when he gets into the one and two situation two and two somewhere in there not going on the 1 0 pitch which also misses find away two balls and those strikes no and now it's not a good time to run Gordon's thrown two fastballs and now you let your hitter try to drive one here this is not a good running count right here first at last year four homers and 57 games after his June call up Replaced Edmonds, went back down later to Triple A, hit 305 for the season. It showed him enough to allow them to deal JT Snow, a two time gold glover, to San Francisco, and that opened up the first base job for the former Nebraska All America. And he is going, swing and a miss, throw is not in time, and a oh. stolen base for DeSarcina. Not a good count to run, but he ran anyway. He knew a fastball was coming, but he got a great jump. You gotta give Collins credit. Well, Hasselman did everything he could do. He just got a good jump off Tom Gordon, and Tom was aware that he may run in this in this situation. And I say it wasn't a good running count because you knew he was going to get a fastball, but he beat the play anyway. So, man in scoring position for her stat. Breaking ball is over to even the count. Alisea would be next. 
And now two and two he can throw either pitch. He could go back to the curveball to try to strike him out or get him to roll over. Or he could throw a fastball. Either one here is effective. Breaking ball, but Erstad holds up. And uh, the appeal at third base, Tim Welke says he went around. And two strikeouts in the fourth inning for Tom Gordon. Angels lead it. Two to nothing. Wouldn't it be nice if everything were guaranteed like cable service? Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's $20. I'm sorry your table wasn't ready. Your dinner will be free. It would be nice, but only your cable company offers you these guarantees. On-time service appointments or $20 refund. Guaranteed. And on-time installation or it's free. Guaranteed. Too bad everything isn't guaranteed like cable service. Sorry we're late, folks. This flight will be free. In 1977, Shakespeare introduced the ugly stick. A rod so strong, so durable, and yet so sensitive. It became the number one selling rod in America. You'd think by now the competition would have done it. Guess not. Ugly Stick by Shakespeare. Still America's strongest, most sensitive rod. The freshness is endless at Red Lobster. With our unlimited soup, salad, and bread lunch. All you want of our hearty soup. Fresh baked biscuits and fresh garden salad topped with shrimp. All just $4.99. Now at Red Lobster. This is miracle Grow Lawn Food. The easy way to a beautiful lawn. It took years to develop these patented granules, but you'll start seeing results in just days. miracle Grow promotes vigorous root growth. Helps fill in thin spots to give you a thick carpet of beautiful green. If you like what miracle Grow does for your garden, you will love what miracle Grow lawn food does for your lawn. And now get rid of dandelions and other weeds with miracle Grow lawn food plus weed control. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Anaheim leading two to nothing. Gordon, four innings. He's allowed four hits and struck out five. Five left on Langston, gaining strength as the game has gone on. Four strikeouts, including three of his last four batters. Only home run came in the first by Edmonds. Mack, bottom of the order, to be followed by Garcia Parra and Valentin in the Red Sox half of the fifth. Langston's throwing the ball extremely well. Got a good compact delivery. He's got a good hip turn. He leads with the hips. Good power fastball. Good power breaking ball. Pete Mack can't catch up to, and it's one ball and one strike. Shane Mack, as we said, off two years in Japan. Some major readjusting, you would think, involved coming back to the big leagues here. Well, there's more off-speed pitches over there. More breaking balls. Very robotic sometimes in the teaching and Shane had, a, had some good years over there There's a lot of American players that are playing over there now and doing quite well 2 1 pitch missed that one too the Angels have Hasegawa in their rotation he'll go Saturday coming over this way from Japan so it's and becoming more and more common and he will throw a uh, very little heat whatsoever. Just right, I understand. This spring, they were they thought he might throw a little bit harder. Terry Collins thought he might throw a little bit harder than what he had seen, and perhaps he will. But for the most part, most of the Japanese pitchers have very good control and change speeds well, and have good breaking balls. So that's got to be tough for Mac now against a guy like Langston. I mean, it's got to look what five miles an hour faster yeah, than if he had the ball gone. well right now too. Couldn't catch up to him. It's a definite adjustment. Fifth strikeout and the fourth in the last five batters rung up by Mark Langston. Let's see this pitch right here. Layrit setting up in. There's the hard breaking ball we're talking about on right handers. I believe it was last inning that he throws. It's, it's a devastating pitch. Very tough to pick up. Breaks hard down and in on the right handers back knee or back foot so to speak. That's how that's where you aim for it. Layrit set up in and Langston hit his spot. 
Garcia Paro 0 for 2. Two flies to right and this one to left for Garrett Anderson who drifts back just a couple of steps. And that was the pitch again Dave. Same pitch. And he, he jammed Garcia Parra on that pitch. That was his breaking ball inside and it breaks down and sharply in. It's a tough pitch to hit. Mark Langston starting his seventh opening day assignment. His fourth is an angel. Last in the opening day lineup in the 94. Beat Minnesota 8 to 2. Here's Valentin who has reached both times a double in the first and a walk in the third. Normally this would be Chuck Finley's assignment but he continues to mend from a facial fracture. And a freak spring training injury. Through a simulated game yesterday through four innings and through very well. We expect they expect him to go out on assignment minor league soon. De Sarcina to his left very smoothly handles the third out and another one two three inning by the Red Sox who continue to trail two to nothing in Anaheim. For letting me be the player I always wanted to be. For Hank Aaron 715. For about 21 years in the majors. For the chance to play in October. For all of us that never got to play. For standing up with dignity. For standing up. For opening our eyes. For empower an entire race. Thank you, Jackie Robinson. Thank you. Jenny, would you do me the honor? Jen, babe, you, me, prom. Yeah. Hi, hello. How you doing? Nope. Kelly Springfield tires are designed to go a long way. No. Jenny, would you go to the prom with me? We've got the warranties to prove it, so go. Jenny, will you go to the prom with me? Oh. And can I use your phone? My car's out of gas. Kelly Springfield. Get every mile you can out of life. They say the 50s were the golden age of television. But today we can actually use our TVs to surf the internet. So we can go places we've always dreamed of going. Find out about almost anything. Hear things we've never heard before. Amazing. Web TV from Philips Magnavox. The power of the internet now on your own television. 1874. The first transatlantic cable connecting Ireland and America. It was made by Siemens. That was then. This is now. Today, phone companies and businesses use Siemens switches to send and receive voices, images, and data together for desktop video conferencing, wireless communications, and high-speed internet access. Siemens technologies keep you in touch and on top. Siemens. Precision thinking. Alisea, Edmonds, and Salmon in the fifth for Anaheim, leading two to nothing behind the... Gem so far tossed by Langston. Only one hit allowed, a double in the first by John Valentin. And a ball to start Alisea. He scored the second run after walking in the third inning. Timmy Naring is up at third base looking for a bunt. Louie normally doesn't do a lot of base hit bunting, he likes to swing the bat. Tom Gordon who has relied increasingly on the breaking ball in the last couple innings it looks like after almost exclusively fastballs in the first two balls and a strike. Yeah, I think 20 out of 22 fastballs in the first inning is just a little too much. Try to cultivate your pitches as the game goes on. But the situation dictated more breaking balls earlier. Line drive which drops in front of Will Cordero and a base hit by Luis Alisea. Well, I'll tell you, expect anything from Terry Collins. He's done two things with De Sarcina that a year ago you, would, you wouldn't have seen. Here's Alisea going right with this pitch. Hassman sits outside. Louis goes right with it. Extremely well. Base hit left field. De Sarcina, he lets swing 3-0, and Terry Collins I'm talking about. Runners at first and third and two outs earlier in the game. Stolen a 2 0 count, high fastball. There's Vaughn Elshelman up. And Gordon's getting his pitch count up there now. He's close to 90 pitches, which is an awful lot. He's averaging over 21 pitches an inning. And especially opening day, 
I don't see, think you'll see him go much more than 110, 115 pitches. Second visit we've seen by the pitching coach, Joe Kerrigan. Part of the order coming up here. Edmonds, two for two. Homer in the first, singled in the third, followed by Salmon and Hollins. With Alice A aboard at first after his first hit as an angel. And misses wide to Jim Edmonds. Now he has seen what Edmonds well, is he, capable of with the first inning home run. What's his thought he's process still gotta, here? He's still got to change speeds. But you're seeing him stay away from him right here. He's going to try to get the ball down in a way like he did on Hollins. And he's got to do that. Edmonds, no, Edmonds has proven he can hit the fastball off him. He's tried to come up and in on him couple times if you're looking for a ground ball double play and a ground ball pitch is that two seamer away like you did Dave Hollins with the bases loaded and they got the ground ball to Valentine. And again there's concern there that's a step off move that's a sign again given from the catcher. It's not just Tommy Gordon doing that that's given from the bench. Alicea going. And uh, Hasma can't get it out of his mitt. And an uncontested stolen base by Luis Alice to get in scoring position. I believe what Jimmy Williams and the coaching staff's going to have to do is just start calling some pitch outs to neutralize what Terry Collins is doing to him right now. He's just taking a game right to him. Good jump by Alice. And he had it stolen off the pitcher. Yeah, I think even if that's smoothly handled by Hasselman, that's still not much of a Nothing play. Nothing Hasselman could have done there to throw him out. Chop foul two and two. And Gordon's a great athlete. He's shown concern. He's got a quick step off move. He can throw over there. But when he delivers to the plate, he lifts his leg up even with his waist. And what that does, it gives too much time, allows the runner to steal second base. A time that you look for on a, a guy that steals second base pitcher can go quicker about 1.1 second to home play. That means the time he lifts his leg, the time the ball hits the catcher's glove. Hard shot handled by Valentin as Alicea moves along the third. First out in the Angel half of the fifth. Now managers have what they call a slide step they'll give to pitchers. And what that is is where you don't lift your leg as high as you would in normal delivery to the plate with a base stealer. You glide your leg, you, you break your back leg down and you glide your left leg and that allows you to get the ball to the catcher quicker. It's called a slide step. It's, it's fairly new innovation the last several years. They have a term for it and an actual sign from the bench is when to slide step. Now Joe Kerrigan I know is not real big on the slide step because the Montreal organization where he came from doesn't really believe in it. They believe it takes away from the pitcher's power. Infield coming in. On the cleanup hitter, Salmon goes right after the first pitch and sends it foul near the Anaheim dugout. Type of situation he is uh, normally going to thrive in. 98 RBIs last year, just missing what would have been his second straight 100 RBI campaign. Tim's an outstanding hitter in these situations, and he's looking to get inside the ball again. We talked about earlier to get something in the air to right center. You want to keep the ball off the ground. You got to get underneath the ball to do that. A pop up is better than a ground ball here. Foul back again. 0 and 2. So you actually change your approach slightly. You don't want to get break your hands too soon as a hitter where you're rolling over and hitting the pitcher's pitch. You do not want a ground ball here. So you try to get underneath the ball, get your hands inside the ball, and hit a hit a nice sacrifice fly to center field. To come back there, they're going to try to throw the, the sinking fastball or hard breaking ball to make him strike out or ground out. This one sails right over our heads into the upper deck. Oh my God. And then uh, induces a mad scramble as it bounces off the facing. That came right the up here. Deck, <laughs> all the way down to the, to the third row. I think, he, I think he's going to go to the strikeout pitch here power curveball bounce it I mean it's a time for it he's got him in the hole here well kept it upstairs but Tim Salmon unable to reach it and it's out number two let's again uh, check in on what maybe a hat trick now from Tino Martinez here's Carl 
Well, as you know, he's already two for two with two homers and five RBIs. Watch and see. Did he get enough of it? Tino Martinez, three for three. Three home runs and all six RBIs. His first career three home run game. Well, last night it was the Griffey Power Show and his former teammate doing him one better tonight. Dave Holland steps in. Anaheim with batters uh, batting with runners in scoring position. 0 for 4 tonight. Boston is 0 for 3. Right here, Nering's even with the bag because I we have seen Dave Holland's bunt in this situation. He's an excellent bunter. He does a lot of things well, Dave Holland's. Think of him just as a power hitter that played with the Phillies, but he does a lot of things well. He runs bases well, he steals bases. And Nering. Nering's wide of the bag, but he's he's even with the bag, which means if Hollins does run the bunt, Nering can come in on it quick enough to take it away from him. Gordon behind him, two and zero. Oh. Now two balls and one strike. Near first base coach Dave Parker. Hollins with the Phillies in the '93 championship season. Seattle planning on Russ Davis at third base this year. Made him available as a free agent, signed by. Anaheim back in November. Also with the Twins last year. Big September for the M's. 353 lays off the breaking ball. Three and one. 222 and 225 and 94-95. So recovered pretty well last year, uh, raising the average almost 40 points for Minnesota and Seattle. Let's say at third, two outs, conference time with Hasselman out to the mound. What happened here is Hass put a finger down. Tommy didn't want it. Hass wants to be sure what they want to throw Dave Hollins right here. They got two bases open. They've got two outs. It means it's, three, it's a three and one count. It's the hitter's count. Don't want to make a mistake. Leave something over the middle of the plate. If he ends up walking him, then you got Garrett Anderson, who's still a good hitter. But right now, 3 1 count, the hitter is at a distinct advantage. The numbers historically on 3 1 counts for hitters here are way to their advantage. So they walk. And Hollins takes the walk, so they're on the corners. Now Hasselman here is going to go out to the mound, and that's, that's it. Jimmy Williams will meet Hasselman at the mound. And we will have pitching change. Look for Vaughn Eshelman to make his way in from the Red Sox bullpen with the Angels leading two to nothing. Only a cop this tough. Not even a bullet in the head could stop him. Could protect a witness this important. He knows my operation from top to bottom. But the hardest part about bringing him in alive. Hey, Dave, does anyone read? What is it, Kirk Douglas movie? Is trying not to kill him. You'll always be my bodyguard. Will you shut up? David Wales, Adam Sandler, Bulletproof. Don't mind him, he's simple. Introducing Biomat's Easy Roll, the flower garden that comes rolled up like a carpet, a giant 10 feet long. Just roll it out and water it. All the seeds and nutrients are in the Easy Roll, ready to spring forth hundreds of the most beautiful flowers imaginable. Many different varieties and colors. It can even be cut to fit your special planter. Biomat's Easy Roll is now only $19.95. Call now and get these special flower shears free. Order Biomat's Easy Roll now. For skin and laser treatment that goes beneath the surface, come to the North Jersey Vein and Laser Skin Care Center at St. Mary's Hospital in Passaic. Advanced technology for treating cosmetic and pathological diseases of the vein and laser treatment for skin and facial lesions. A full-service vein and skin care center in New Jersey. We are the leaders in the field of vascular and laser surgery. St. Mary's Hospital in Passaic. For yourself, for your family. Leading the way into the next century. Is the man to beat. John Harks leads the team to beat. Metro Stars versus DC United, Saturday at 7:30. MLS on ESPN. 
The A's were down 6-1 to the Indians, and Dave mentioned the fact that the Bash brothers have been reunited. Mark McGuire down the line. Tony Batista scores. So does Scott Brocious. They have come all the way back and knocked Nagy out. It is now 6-6. All right, Carl, and the pitching change, Vaughn Eshelman will face Garrett Anderson with runners on the corners and two outs in the fifth inning. First ball hitting and a pop-up by Anderson, which will float lazily down to Mo Vaughn in foul territory. One pitch does it for Eshelman. And the no harm, as it turns out at all, with Alicia staying at third base. Through five, two to nothing. Take Ralphie for a drive. <laughs> Dogs love trucks. The more people who make a living with their tools, buy their tools at the Home Depot. And with our incredible selection, all at guaranteed low prices, it's a pretty powerful argument for why you should shop here too. The Home Depot, where people who know their stuff buy their stuff. Yours? A spatula. Yep, like accessories. Now at Pep Boys, get truck tailgate protectors, rubber queen bed mats, and bug collectors at $29.99. Pep Boys, everything but gas. Mets to the Padres, it is a night of home runs. Sandy Ashby, who let's call him Ed Yardo, Alfonso. He goes down and gets one. The one run lead, now two. Ashby still in, but the Mets are on top by a score of 4 to David, back to you. All right, Carl, and it remains 2 to nothing. I'm going to catch all the baseball news every weeknight at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. All the updated scores and highlights. Your most complete source of baseball news with Carl Harold Reynolds and the gang. Except Wednesday, of course, we bring you the game itself. ESPN, your source for Major League Baseball. And Langston, who has settled into an overpowering rhythm, will look at Vaughn, Stanley, and Nearing, the three, four, five hitters for the Red Sox in the sixth inning. He's gotten Vaughn on a grounder to short after walking him in the first. But since the first inning doubled by Valentin, the Red Sox have not reached Langston for as much as a base hit. The last 17 batters have failed to get a hit. Now he has walked four in that span. But we saw an overpowering performance at Dodger Stadium by Kurt Schilling of the Phillies yesterday, and this is uh, very much on a par with what Schilling did as he's one and one now with Vaughn. And Mark Langston's on a good pitch count, which is what managers and pitching coaches look for, especially opening day. He's averaging about 16 pitches an inning, which, as we said earlier, is a general guideline. Stay on that pace. You can get him late in the ball game to set it up for Mike James, their setup man, and Troy Percival. So if Mark Langston can get him through the seventh inning, then they're into one of the Angels' strong points, which is their bullpen, their late men. One hit stuff through five, and he's ahead of on one and two. And that's one of the points. The Angels, they really miss Chuck Finley. They need Chuck Finley and Mark Langston to set up this ball club as their one and two starters. This staff was only better than Detroit last year. Swung on and missed by Vaughn. Strikeout number six for Langston. It's the power breaking ball again, I believe. He's got it going on tonight. Leyritz sits outside. That's the power breaking ball. Power slider, hard slider. Looks like a strike when it's crossing the plate and the bottom drops out of it. It's not a curveball. It breaks down and across the plate as opposed to a curveball. It breaks over the top and straight down. Two different pitches. Here's the DH, Mike Stanley. But when you throw it that hard, it looks like a fastball, and then it breaks down and across the plate away from you as a left-hand hitter into you as a right-hand hitter. 1-0 pitch to Stanley. Swung on and missed. The spring ERA for the Angels this year gave them no help at all that they were going to improve off last year when 
Their ERA was 530, and again, only Detroit was worse. All-time record set by the Detroit staff. Spring this year, 826 was the team ERA, but they settled down against the Dodgers in the freeway series. Allowed only four run runs in 28 innings. And uh, they have Finley, they hope, ready to go, maybe after a brief rehab assignment at Class A. And that's why they traded J.T. Snow to get Watson from San, San Francisco. And he pitched well the other day in the freeway series here in Anaheim against the Dodgers. Really one of his better appearances. He had a bad spring as well. So I think better things are on the horizon for the Angels. They've got some quality people. And Finley and Langston lead the core. It puts Jason Dixon back into the number three spot where he probably should be right now. 2-2 pitch is grounded and handled behind third. The long throw in time from Hollins. Nicely done. Well, Dave Hollins has an outstanding throwing arm. He's known to be a little bit erratic, but you know you're going to get power out of him every time he makes a play. He goes laterally on this play. Backhands it. He's going to throw off his right foot. Gets his feet underneath him and throws a strike. And when we talked earlier about getting your feet underneath you, like Tommy Gordon did earlier when he threw that ball away, on a double play. That's what we're talking about. He Tim Nearing sends this one deep and out of here. Left field, the second base hit allowed all night by Langston leaves the yard and a home run for Tim Nearing. And it's two to one. Or and you talk about coming out of nowhere. There was no indication that the Red Sox were. And I think this is his slider again, and Timmy got inside that one and kept it fair and drilled it to left. Absolutely no hint that the Sox were about to touch Langston for as much as a base hit. Nero, who had 17 homers a year ago, is followed by Will Cordero, who grounds a single to center field. Now we're making it interesting. Well, I had just been totaling up the retired Red Sox in order and you go back to the end of the third let's uh, believe he retired it was, nine straight before this I believe this pitch was a slider Timmy went down and stayed inside it he did, see he didn't hook that ball stayed right inside it with his hands and drilled it to left it's a line shot Might have been a fastball. It was tough for me to tell on that one. Obviously, it wasn't a good one if it was a slider. And Mike James is uh, the right-hander getting loosened up at the Anaheim bullpen. Well, they'd like to see Langston get through this inning. Rudy Pemberton, the batter, sure. he does have two outs. Check of Cordero aboard with his first base hit. He had struck out twice, two of the six rung up by Langston. The Sox strike all of a sudden in the top of the sixth. Go ahead, run at the plate. Emberton with a high pop fly in foul territory, calling it on it is Hollins. So Boston finally breaking through with a home run by Nearing. And it's two to one through five and a half. A few words from our high performance expert. <clears throat> Sit go. Says. Go. It's a job. Boy. Mama said there'll be days like this. There'll be days.